Hey everybody, how are you doing out there? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. I hope you are having a fantastic day. And today, I want to talk a little bit about this conversation that some of us may have seen going around out there about the idea of Nintendo maybe getting a little bit complacent or lazy or a little too comfortable due to the crazy success of the Nintendo Switch. Now, the impetus for this conversation from a lot of people does make sense to me in a lot of ways because we know how successful the Switch is, we understand the incredibly strong sales, the records that it's breaking, all of the great games that have released on it, the great sales of most of those games, and all of these different things. But then, on the other side of that, there are also always things that we can criticize Nintendo for. They are very good at getting themselves in kind of strange, odd, pseudo-controversial situations, and they definitely open themselves up to criticism quite often as well. And there are elements about the Switch and the Switch era of Nintendo, as awesome and successful as it is, that, yeah, we could maybe criticize them for in some ways. And I think that's where we see some of this conversation coming from about if Nintendo is now just getting themselves way too comfortable to want to push the envelope, to want to do exciting things, to want to give more reveals, to want to show up at a Game award show, for example, and preview new games. Stuff like that is what's getting people kind of talking about this. And like I said, because of both sides of this angle here, I do definitely understand each side of this argument. I'm not quite yet ready to throw Nintendo completely under the bus in the Switch era and the current environment and say that maybe they're too complacent or lazy with the Switch, but I do understand it, and so, yeah, I want to kind of talk about both sides of this concept today. Of course, before we dive any deeper into this Nintendo topic today, I like to remind you guys I am always trying to grow the channel here on Rule of Two Review. I am so close to crossing 18,000 subscribers here at the end of the year. I am less than 70 subscribers away. I'm probably about 60 or 65 subscribers away. I would love to do that before the end of the year. I upload every single week and I talk about all things Nintendo and I talk about all things gaming. So as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you hear, then I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. So to get right to the meat of the conversation and actually answer this question on if Nintendo is maybe getting a little bit too complacent or maybe even lazy because of the Switch's crazy success, I mostly want to say no, I don't see it. Even though, like I said in the beginning, that I do understand the reasons why people say that and I do have my own criticisms of how Nintendo is handling some things, I think it's hard for me to go that far to say that they're maybe getting lazy just because the Switch is so successful. Are they maybe adjusting some of their business and their rollout of new games or new ideas or whatever might be happening with their next hardware because the Switch is being so successful? Yes, I do definitely think that there's some truth to that and I think you would be silly to deny it. In fact, a startlingly good example of this is the Wii U, which I hate to point out because as you guys know, I absolutely love and adore the Wii U. In fact, there are many elements of that console that I actually like more than I like about the Switch. I mean, as far as which console I prefer, that's really hard to say, but there are definitely things that the Wii U did that I like a lot more than the Switch. The Switch's best benefit to me right now is solely the fact that it has a Metroid game, and the Wii U never got a Metroid game. But boy do I love that gamepad and the few games that really took advantage of it. And it was just a fun time and a fun era for Nintendo and to be a fan, even though they were struggling as far as sales go. So anyway, when you compare the Wii U and the Switch, what happened with the Wii U is a great example of what happens when a company doesn't have a very successful device or product and they have to maybe adjust or change or work extra hard to keep their consumer invested. And with the Wii U, despite releasing a ton of great games and many of them that did sell pretty well despite the low console sales, they knew that they had to do something more than what the Wii U was to get people engaged. And so, what did they do? They kind of evolved the concept even further. They did an about face early on in that generation and they moved on from the Wii U only four and a half years in and they gave us the super successful and super awesome Nintendo Switch. And so the argument could be that the Switch and its great success was born out of a need of the Wii U itself not being so successful. In fact, the Wii U wasn't even like kind of successful, sadly. I have to admit that it was honestly just a failure. And that failure forced a brilliant change and a brilliant adjustment to their business. 
and created this extremely successful Nintendo Switch. And so yeah, there's an argument to be made there that if the Switch was maybe less successful than it is, that perhaps we might be seeing more game output or more promises of the future and more exciting announcements and directs more often and all of these things. Maybe that would be how Nintendo would be operating their business if the Switch wasn't as successful as it is. But of course, that's the thing, right? How successful is too successful to give positive forward momentum, and how unsuccessful is unsuccessful enough to have to force a company to change and release more exciting products. Does that even make sense? I don't know if that made sense the way I said it, but hopefully you guys can follow what I'm getting at. It's basically a matter of what's your barometer for sales, right? To actually make things more exciting. I use the Wii U as an example, but that is an extreme case of low sales that Nintendo and most companies don't really see very often within their lives. And on the opposite end of that, the Switch is so crazy successful that that's why people wonder if maybe we'd be seeing even more exciting games and more announcements at Game Award shows if Nintendo had to fight just a little bit more to keep people engaged and invested. But right now, if we're being honest, the Switch, despite some of its faults and flaws, is so set successful and is selling so well, and even the games on it are selling so well, that maybe Nintendo isn't having to fight as hard as they would if the system was less successful to make people want to go out and buy it. And so that challenge of the market can sometimes breed creativity and force a company to be more creative and active in trying to make more exciting games. I mean, that's the concept, that's the argument, I do understand it. But honestly, I think when you look at the Switch's library and Nintendo's output on the Switch, it's pretty darn solid, man. It's In fact, it's great. I wouldn't even call it solid, solid. I would call it overall mostly great. There are a couple of backslides and they maybe have relied too heavily on Wii U ports and old ports and stuff on this console. Um, and that is unfortunate and a shame, I think. However, that's also a common practice in the industry across the board anyway, so they're not really the only company doing that. They maybe have done it to a larger volume than other companies because there's like 15 Wii U ports or something obscene on the Switch, and I do think that's too many. But there's so many other fantastic examples of new games and new entries and storied franchises that to me, I see Nintendo doing a great job making their own fantastic games. I mean, we've had new Luigi's Mansion games, we've had a new Zelda game, a new Mario game, we've gotten a new Metroid game, hello, if that doesn't prove Nintendo's willingness to release new products, I don't know what will. There's been a Mario plus Rabbids game, and now a sequel, there was a Splatoon sequel, there's even been a new Fire Emblem game, they're getting tons of great third-party support and third-party exclusives even, when you look at games like Project Octopath, and Bayonetta 3, and Astral Chain, and Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I don't want to go through the whole library. I think you guys get the point. And you know the Switch's library. You know what I'm talking about. I think we've seen fantastic output and effort from Nintendo, for the most part, in releasing new games. I mean, there's even games like, you know, Mario Tennis and Mario Golf that they've released on this console. I mean, I really can't find too many examples where Nintendo hasn't shown that they're willing to make great new entries in some of their best franchises. Now, maybe we haven't seen enough new IPs, right? Like, what's the new IP we've seen? Like, that 51 board games thing? Like, come on, dude. Like, I, I know people like that game, and that's fine. But that's not really a great example of a, quote, new IP for Nintendo, of all companies, to release on their current console. We want new IPs that fall within the categories of Zelda games and Pikmin games and Metroid games and Mario games, right? You know, stuff like when they came out with Xenoblade, for example. We want those kinds of new IPs from Nintendo. And unfortunately, we really haven't seen any examples of that in the Switch era. But when I look at stuff like Luigi's Mansion and Metroid and Zelda and Mario and Fire Emblem, I mean, and the list can go on and on. We even got a new Hyrule Warriors. Like, the longer I talk, the more of these games I think of. And so... I do think Nintendo might be very comfortable due to the Switch's success and they might be taking their times on some thing, some things longer than I would like them to be doing, but we've seen so many great games. Oh my god, we got a new No More Heroes this year. I mean, come on. The Switch's library is outstanding. Now, there is another area where maybe I could see some of Nintendo's complacency setting in and the fact that the Switch is so successful, it might be delaying some of their progress and evolution in this one area. And that, of course, is on the hardware side. That is the one thing where 
just speaking for myself, not for you guys, but for myself, I've maybe placed a little bit of a ticking clock on them from when I would like to see them introduce some new, more powerful and exciting hardware beyond the Nintendo Switch. And this whole thing is a very tricky thing for me to navigate just personally as a fan for myself because I do like the Switch so much. It's not my favorite Nintendo console, don't get me wrong. It's like somewhere in the middle for me if I was to like rank all of their consoles. It's somewhere in the middle, maybe even in the lower half. Like, I love it to death. I just love all of their consoles, and I think prior eras have been more exciting for me than the current era. But I love the Switch. I don't necessarily need it to be so much more graphically capable than it is right now. Like, I'm not a graphics whore the way a lot of other people sometimes tend to be. But at the same time, I do think that we're kind of getting to the point where Nintendo needs to make an evolutionary step. I'm sitting here enjoying games on my PlayStation 5 and now my brand new Xbox Series X, seeing what these other companies are doing and what they visually and technologically are capable of. And, and even though I can enjoy the Switch at its current power level, it also becomes exciting for me to think about what their games could be like with more power added to them. Not just graphically per se, but also in terms of overall scope, in terms of fidelity, in terms of like AI design or just conceptual design. Things that Nintendo is definitely holding themselves back from because the Switch, as awesome as it is, is already old tech. The hard truth that people don't sometimes want to admit is that the Switch was old tech when it released and now the competition has leaped over it twofold because they moved on to the next generation and Nintendo is still dealing with prior generation hardware even though it's awesome for what it is. And so if we relate this to the main idea and topic of Nintendo maybe being, you know, lazy or too comfortable because the Switch is successful, I personally am looking at things through a lens of if we don't see new hardware like talked about or hinted at next year and at the very least released in 2023 which you guys have heard me say for about 18 months now if we don't see new nintendo hardware in 2023 that's significantly more capable i'm not talking about switch oled nonsense i'm talking about stuff that enhances the tv play stuff that makes games look and feel and sound and play better more modern more capable than the current switch in 2023 then i will see nintendo being pretty lazy due to the fact that the switch is successful i think that nintendo will be releasing new hardware in 2023 it is my prediction but they might not a prediction is not a guarantee i've never said that i know nintendo is planning new hardware soon it's always just been a guess and at this point, it's also a desire. It's something that I desire for Nintendo to do, you guys, is to either release just something that's called Super Switch that is almost as powerful as PS5 and Xbox Series X in 2023, or to just release something called the Switch 2 that is that powerful in by, by the end of 2023. That's kind of the time frame for me. If we don't see them do that, boy, I, I guess I don't really know how to say what what i would be thinking or feeling at that time it would just depend on what nintendo's business and their game output looks like i mean let's be real next year in 2022 as i discussed in my last video they've got a ton of killer app games coming out next year so they're not hurting for games to make the switch exciting next year in 2022. i don't think 22 is the time to see the next hardware release but by 2023 the only big thing we know on the horizon beyond 2022 is metroid prime 4 my most anticipated game and as you've heard me say that sucker needs to be cross-gen or next gen and that's when i think the next nintendo hardware needs to be releasing is in 2023 if they don't do that because people are still buying switches to record-breaking numbers i think it's long term going to be a bad business decision for nintendo Sure, they might be okay in the moment because people are still buying the Switch, but they need to always be one step ahead of the consumer and have a plan in place for the future market. And to me, as I've said several times already, 2023 is that barometer for me. I need to see that next hardware then. So that is when I can start having a conversation with you guys about me seeing Nintendo being lazy. So this is just my take on this topic and conversation that's been going around a little bit out there. I'm curious what you guys think on this idea. Have you been feeling this way that maybe you see Nintendo getting lazy and kind of too safe and comfortable because the Switch is successful? How do you feel about my breakdown and my opinions? Do you feel the same? Do you feel opposite? Whatever you think, talk about it below. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule to Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.